Hey guys, um, I told you I was going to do an extra book today. Um, this book is kind of cool because it's called What Minerva Saw, and it's a story about the Great Bangor Fire of 1911, which really happened in Bangor. And it was illustrated by the fourth class, grade class of Mary Snow School in Fairmont, and Fairmont School. So it was written and illustrated by two schools of fourth graders in Bangor. So I thought it would be kind of cool. I forgot I had it, and I saw it sitting there. Um, and I thought it'd be cool to read. So it was possible Stephen and Katabaka King donated money to make this printed. And then they had all the classes that worked on it here. And the Bangor Historical Society and the Discovery Museum and the school system all came together to make this book. So I'm going to read it to you guys. It was a warm Sunday afternoon on the last day of April in 1911. The sky was bright blue and there was a gentle breeze coming from the Penobscot River. Bangor was in drought and everything seemed to be covered in a fine layer of dust. Most of the buildings in Bangor, from the warehouses and sheds by the river to the houses and shops in downtown, were made of wood and they all looked dry and parched from the lack of spring rain. As I looked out over Bangor, I saw the people walking in and out of the buildings in their top, top hats and Sunday finery. Bangor was always so beautiful on a Sunday afternoon in the springtime when everyone was enjoying the warm weather after church. There's a picture. Actually, this one is cool because I can hold it up so you guys can see the picture as I'm reading. The breeze coming off the river was lightly blowing in petals from the flowering trees. They were determined to grow despite the lack of rain. Everything was calm and the four o'clock train started rumbling through town. As the noise of the train faded in the distance, the town was quiet again. And when I suddenly smelled smoke and then saw a small fire, fire in the distance, a shed on Broad Street was on fire. Before I knew it, the fire was spreading. I could even taste the smoke. It wasn't long before I saw people running and heard fire bells ringing in the distance. It looked like the fire was spreading in five different directions at once and carried the wind from the stream carried by the wind from the stream it moves faster than the firefighters could possibly stop it fire started raging as it spread i saw hundreds of people suddenly passing by the flames erupted from the nearby buildings pedestrians were hurrying carrying chairs trunks and even beds trying to save anything they could from the engulfing flames then a small family came my way. A little girl was carrying her teddy bear and a boy was carrying food in a wooden car. Police officers were going to each house and business, evacuating everyone from downtown. In the distance, I could see the students and teachers running from the high school, carrying typewriters, hoping to save their cherished possessions. Up the hill, the individuals and the families went, making their way, way away from the fire and towards the Broadway Park, safe territory. I wanted to look away, but my carved eyes saw everything. Smoke was filling the air faster than I could have imagined. The fire was hungry and the breeze blew. It easily from the wooden building to the wooden building. Suddenly, there was an explosion from the library. Dark clouds of smoke danced through the air above the building, carrying the burning pages of 70,000 books in the library. The fire had gotten too hot beating off the books that the glass windows blew out from the building i wanted to help but all i could do was watch the fire raged on everything around me was burning and the fire felt like it was as hot as the sun after the fire had been burning for hours i began to feel helpless how could they possibly stop a fire this big just as I was giving up hope, I saw a train coming along the river and heard the screech as it stopped in Bangor. As soon as the train stopped, firefighters from other towns rushed out to help. I also heard the chomp, clomp, clomp, clomp of additional horse-drawn fire wagons coming down the State Street Hill. Help was arriving. Firefighters from Waterville, Augusta, Lewiston, and Portland had taken the train to come to the aid of the Queen City. I heard them saying that on the way... On the clear night, flames from the city could be seen 25 miles away. The sun had set hours ago, but the flames were high that it looked like midday. I could see the desperation of people's faces 
as they watched their city burn. The wooden buildings were all built too close together. When Bangor had sprouted up as a logging city, there were very few parks or buffer zones to stop the fire from spreading. The fact that it had not rained in weeks made for a perfect storm. Even with the additional firefighters from the other cities, the flames were spreading at an alarming rate. The other people were beginning to step in to help. I saw policemen and cadets from the University of Maine helping. Even Boy Scouts were guarding belongings that people had managed to save for their homes. Even with the extra help, it was obvious that more needed to be done to save the Bangor from the fire. The fire chief realized that he that the fire was spreading up Park Street toward the residential neighborhoods where hundreds of people lived. It was bad enough that he had already lost most the library, the post office, the customs house, and many businesses. He could not stand to lose an entire neighborhoods of houses too. Though decisions had to be made, the easiest way to keep the fire from spreading would be to take away anything that could spread to. To try to protect the neighborhoods up at the top of the hill, they decided to dynamite the Universalist Church, figuring that if there was just an empty space of rubble there, the fire would not be able to pass to the houses. Unfortunately, they were wrong. I watched from Exchange Street as they destroyed the church out of sheer desperation, but soon after, there were flames spreading past the brick rubble. It was now the mid middle of the night. Firefighters and volunteers had been working tirelessly to stop the spread of destruction, but to no avail. It had been almost 13 hours since the fire started, and everyone was losing hope. Suddenly, I felt drops on my forehead. I didn't dare to believe it. Could it be that the rain had finally come? Sure enough. But a light rain began to fall from the sky. I saw many firefighters pause to look up at the sky, unable to believe it. This was exactly what was needed to turn the, fi the fight into our favor. The rain gave a new energy to the exhausted firefighters, and they began working even faster and harder. They finally had to an advantage over the relentless fire. They worked through the dawn to save the city. In the early morning light on May 1st, 1911, the smoke began to lift and I could see the destruction from the worst fire Bangor had ever known. There was rubble everywhere. The ground was littered with black charred wood and on many streets and on the only structures left standing were the stone chimneys. The fire destroyed 285 homes, 100 businesses and 7 churches by the time it was done. It seemed as though everything around me was in ashes. My beautiful Bangor, Queen City on the Penobscot, was gone. You may think that the citizens of Bangor would give up and not know what to do, but living in Maine had taught them that life was not always easy and that you can never give up. The women organized places for all the displaced families to stay and get food while the men got their shovels and the, and the wagons and got to work. Almost as soon as the flames were out, the determined people of Bangor set to work to rebuild their city. The people were smart. They learned from their mistakes. Instead of building new wood buildings, Bangor got beautiful makeover in brick. Many parks were added too, giving more space between blocks of buildings in case a fire ever happened again. If you walk around downtown Bangor today, you will still see many of the buildings that were built over the next three years still standing. That was the end. So Minerva, just in case you guys didn't notice, and I don't think they have a picture of her in here, is a um, statue that is on top of one of the buildings in the middle of Bangor. Okay, so I just thought it would be kind of cool to read um, since it was written by students just like you guys. All right, have a good day, guys.